Okay, let us go ahead and get ourselves started. Today we actually want to shift our focus around a little bit. We're going to start working with the notion that rather than working on these small projects, little individual houses or research stations or things which are actually sort of very easy for you to manage in your mind because there's really just not that much space to them. They're kind of fine little projects where you can really love all the details and control all that. You know, there's a whole nether class of projects we like to work on, which are really much bigger. And as we work on these bigger projects, you know, we just need finer ways of organizing and sorting and filtering and deciding what information to present. An example for it is uh, like the whole science and engineering quad here. As we went through and did this, you know, it's actually quite a big project that really has been in the planning stage for like 10 years. Just, you know, a lot of work went into this, and even in tackling the project it wasn't really possible to sort of take on the entire project at once. They broke it into a series of phases. So the Y2E2 building was built first and really used as a prototype for the other two buildings, or the other buildings. In the second phase, we've done the engineering center and we did the new nanotech building, okay? And they hopefully learned something from the design of what happened here and what happened after we moved in about what worked well and didn't work well. Right now, the building that will replace the Ginson Lab is still being designed, the final stages of that, and will eventually take out that small little lab building that's across the way in the courtyard, and there'll be another building that looks somewhat like the Y2E2 building over there, completing the quad. Now, we often phase projects, partly because they're just so big and complex, it's hard to manage a single project, but often because, oh, just due to budget limitations, you can't really do it all at once, and that's the reality of a lot of projects. Yeah, we have to sort of go ahead and focus on one, then we'll do another one. We have to do it in stages because we don't have the resources to do the whole thing from start to finish. Okay? And another sort of example of where we do things in phases is, oh, I very often do renovation projects for people. Things where, you know, it's actually quite uncommon to start out with a completely green field that has nothing on it. It's much more common, I get called in, you have an existing house, it may be historic, maybe 100 years old, and what we want to do is update it, but we need to sort of think about the existing house that's there and model it, then think about the things we're going to change and model those changes that will be part of your renovation project. But even further than that, often we sort of have a future phase for things that you can't do right now that are later on in the plan. So, oh, on one of the big houses that we worked on in San Jose, the idea was, you know, we took this 100-year-old house, we changed it quite a bit, added a lot of things on the second and third stories to it, but eventually they were going to do a pool and a cabana and some things that really couldn't be tackled as part of the first project. So it adds several phases to it. Okay, so in thinking about these phases, okay, I want you to think about them as being sort of big milestones, big chunks that it makes sense to sort of divide things. Things like existing versus new construction, or even for the science and engineering quad, it was building one, building two, building three, something like that. Okay, don't think of phases as being that individual construction activity level, because if we try to organize it at that level, it's just going to be too complex. The model will get very, very hard to control. So, you know, the way it's intended to be used are sort of these big monumental milestones, where that other level, where we actually say that, oh, each of these different elements will be placed according to a construction schedule, okay, We'll do that in a different tool. Okay, there's a tool called Navisworks, which is very good for taking individual elements and mapping them against schedule activities, and we can do complete 4D simulations to kind of show exactly how the project will be constructed. Okay, but that's at a finer level. Okay. Another phase we typically don't create is one called demolition. So we, we instead sort of say that demolition is something that will infer out of the difference between phase two and phase one. If we take a look at those two things, we can go ahead and figure out what got demolished and what got added to it. Okay, we'll control things there, but we can go ahead and just leave those big phases, and that's generally a good level at which to approach it. You don't want to have too many different phases. Okay, so let's start by just setting up some phases on a project so we can sort of experiment with this concept. We'll go through this phasing, and then I'll, at the end of the class, I'll show you sort of another technique that we use for um, big projects, which we'll, I guess we'd loosely call like uh, area and space planning, which is another way of basically approaching how we can sort of uh, just make sure our design goals are met, okay, on a big project without having to do all the detail. But I am going to start out by opening a project. You'll find the same project out on the L drive if you'd like to follow along with me. 
And if you go out to the L drive, 110 files, and you go into my folder, where did it go? Session 12, right there. We'll say campus building, we'll open that up. Okay, give that just a minute to open. As it opens, it's taking a little bit of time as it pulls off the network. Let's take a look at this little building. It's actually a small building that might look somewhat familiar to you. This is a little building that's, I'd say it's loosely based on the Y2E2 building. It's got the stone panels on the outside, some deep set windows, kind of a big hip roof with some metal standing seam on the top of it, some arcades on the outside. It's just a building to work with. Okay, like Y2E2, I'm gonna give you ones a little more uh, realistic to work on for the assignment, but this will get us going today. If we look at the building and we go take a look at some of the floor plan views, for example, let me look at level two right now. You'll see that the building has actually you know, been allocated. There are some office spaces, there are some things called hall spaces, some bathroom spaces, some stairs. The idea that it could be like a little, just a kind of office building for a campus. Okay. Notice also we have a legend going on that basically shows what the uses of each of the different spaces are. Office versus hall versus bathroom and assigned some different colors. Okay, we'll explore that at the end of class in terms of how we use these color legends to sort of give some more meaning and convey uh, just kind of easy summaries to people who are reviewing our drawings. Okay, but this building's pretty much the same on level one, level two, and level three. There's not really much difference between the different levels. The idea was, even though right from the beginning, that there would be a connection between this building and some future buildings. So if I go back out to the 3D view, You'll see we have a big green patch there that's just waiting for some more buildings to be put on the patch. And what we're going to do, just as a really quick thing, is add some more buildings, some building shapes on the patch, and we could even think about how the buildings interconnect. But this building right now is in phase one. Okay, it got built as part of phase one, so we're going to think about phase two and phase three and putting some more buildings in these future phases. Okay, to get ourselves set up for this exercise, let's do this. We'll go to manage and we'll create some phases to work with. So if you choose phases, you'll see that right now is the existing phase one. Okay, it's kind of hanging around there just waiting for us. And I can add some more phases. Again, I can add as many as I want, but I'll just put them afterwards. I'll put phase two, I'll put phase three, maybe even phase four, where I'll say that phase two is going to be, oh, the engineering center. And I'm gonna make that into a classroom building, pardon me. I'm going to go ahead and make that the engineering center. And I'll make this, oh, like the lab building. So I'm just creating some different phases. Okay, There is a time order from past to future implied in this list. So you know, if you need to go ahead and move things around, you can in terms of like uh, shifting things. But right now we'll say existing classroom engineering and lab. And that's enough to get ourselves started. Okay, now, every object, every object that we put in the model and every view in the model is actually associated with some phases. Okay, so if we take a look at that existing building and we click on it and we actually look at its instance properties, for example, let's take a look at the roof and I say, look at its instance properties you'll see it actually has some properties. It was created in a phase, and it was demolished in a phase. In this case, phase none for demolished, because it hasn't been demolished, but it was created in phase one. Okay? And we're gonna start playing around with that critical set of variables. When were you created and when were you demolished? Because that's really how we're gonna control, really, when things appear and when things disappear. Okay, everything's gonna happen with those two variables. Okay? Now, in order to go ahead and work with those two variables, and think about what's displayed, we should also note that each of the different views has a phase associated with it. So let me take a look at the view and the view properties. And you'll see that way down at the bottom here, there's a phase here, it's phase one. Okay, and so what is, how do these two things work together? 
If you're in phase one, things that are, existed, elements that existed in phase one are typically shown. Okay, if you're in phase two, elements that were created in phase two are typically shown, as well as ones that were there from phase one. Okay, if you're in phase three, you get the phase three elements plus the elements from phase two and phase one. So we move forward in time, and things will continue to move forward from phase to phase unless we set them to be demolished because we can demolish things during any of the phases too. Okay, and often we do to make room for new buildings. So it all starts with this whole idea of phases, views, and what phase each of the different views is set to. Now to make this all possible, let me pop back over here, it's very helpful to actually set up the phase for each view before we get started. Because the phase for each view is going to have a couple of different very key things that it does for it. The phase for each view is going to really determine in that view what's displayed, okay, but it's also going to be useful because the phase for each view determines for any objects that you place in that view which phase they were considered to be created. Okay? So in the same sense that when we put things on the level one view, Okay, it thinks those objects belong to level one, or if we put something on the second floor view, it thinks they're on the second floor. If we put things in a phase one view, it says, oh, you must have been created back then. But if we put them in the phase three view, they'll say, okay, you didn't get created till that phase, so I won't show you in the earlier phases. Okay? So this view property, the phase property of every view is actually kind of a really critical one. And we can set that for really all of the views, the plans, the elevations, the sections. 3D, the schedules, any of those things all have a view property. And really, that's the key to figuring out how you can basically take one big model and display the appropriate information based on which phase you're trying to show, is to always set the phase to the appropriate phase to be displayed, okay, and then the right things will show through. Let's kind of show you what that looks like in practice. Yes, Mr. Furzum. But the question is saying is that phase the entire project? Yes, it does. It's, yeah, it's exactly, exactly. All the elements, no matter what phase, are part of the same project model, and we can access them using any of the tools. It's really just one layer of information, and it's one way of slicing the model. Okay, but yeah, it's all Norts. Okay, so let's show you what we can do. Let's go ahead, and I'll even rename this one because it's really that's actually a level one. I'll call it phase one. Okay, and I know it's phase one because if I go to the view properties, uh, you will see that it's set up to phase one. Okay, let's go ahead and set up a level one phase two. And how I might do that is, rather than going through and continuing to change the phase property, I'm gonna duplicate that view so that I can actually have two views. I'm gonna have level one phase one and I'll also have level one phase two. And why do I do that? That way I can actually just very quickly switch between the views and place things in one or place things in the other. And based on which view I used, I'll be designating which phase I'm creating the objects. Okay. Same sense, I can go through and create that same view. I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to rename it level three or phase three. Okay, in the same sense, I'll choose it and change its view properties. And I'll say, let's go ahead and set you to be phase three instead. Okay, now I like these views, phase one, phase two, and phase three, because I'm going to use them to place the information in the right phases. We're going to find out, though, when I'm actually creating drawing sets, I can use those three different views to really just show the phase one objects or the phase two objects or the phase three objects. Okay, so it's helpful to have those three different views, or three of the same view really set the different phases. Now, I could do that same thing for any of the different sections, the elevations, the schedules. I'm going to do it to the 3D views, because I like working in the 3D view. So I'm going to set myself up with three different copies of the 3D view, one for phase one, one for phase two, and one for phase three. So again, there's phase one. Let me duplicate that view. And I'll change it to be phase two.
Again, I'll have to set its view properties to phase two. And then I'll again duplicate that for phase three. Now, this seems like a lot of work to go through and set this up. It is kind of tedious to do this the first time. But let me assure you that it's worthwhile to get all this stuff set up, you know, spend the 10 minutes and really get it all set up, get everything named nicely so that later on you don't have to worry about this again. When we work with phases, people rarely have trouble with the issue of actually putting things in the right phase. Where you tend to get yourself in trouble is if the things aren't named properly, you end up putting things in the wrong view, or you think you're looking at something because the name said one thing, but it, what was actually set up through the view properties was a little bit different. So it's worth it to go ahead and just kind of really make sure that's set up properly right up front. Even though it's like 10 tedious minutes of duplicating naming, changing properties, duplicating naming, changing properties. Okay, now as we go through and create those different views, okay, the idea is that every element has phase properties. So we can go ahead and take a look at any element, look at its instance properties, and then see really when it was created and when it was demolished. Okay? And we can set those explicitly by choosing the elements, or we could actually do that implicitly by going to a view and creating things in that view and kind of adjusting them there. And let me show you what I mean. For example, if I come on over here to phase two, okay, notice that phase two, the existing buildings kind of grayed out. We'll talk about that in just a second. It's overridden, so it's sort of diminished a little bit. We'll go to phase two. Let's create some new walls in the phase two drawing. I'll say home, walls. I can choose some wall type that I want to work with. Oh, what do I want to do here? I shouldn't even remember what I did that uh, for that panel. I think that one's that one. Okay, I'll draw some new walls. This might be what my new building is going to look like over here. Okay, there's building number two. We should probably put a roof on it or something like that. But notice it looks a little bit different than the phase one building. Okay, it's shown in what's called by category, or it's kind of natural colors and materials, whereas phase one's overridden right now. And I'll show you how that's controlled in just a second. But if I go back to phase one, you'll see that in phase one, the new building in phase two isn't shown. In phase two, phase one is grayed out and the phase two building is shown in all its glory. And if we go to the phase three, what happens is phase one and phase two are grayed out and we're ready to start putting phase three's building there instead. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do that. Let's put a building over there. Oh, what'll I do? I'll grab some walls. I'll go through, I'll create something kind of like the engineering center. Let's say it's gonna go all the way up to the roof. Oops, now I take that back. I'm placing them on level one. It goes up to the roof level. Oh, what do I want it to be? I'm gonna be an eight-sided polygon. I'll just put it out here somewhere. Okay, there's my phase three building. It's inside out right now, but we can fix that. I can put a roof on this thing. If I go through and put the roof on it, oh, I'll put it up at the roof level. Let me just tab over here. I'll do some sort of footprint roof. And I can say they're all defining slope, making like a little peak. Just finish that up. Oops. Didn't put a peak on there. Yes, David, what you got? Oh, oh, no worries. Let me change that to make it define slope. There we go. Okay, there's my little phase three building hanging around out there. So again, phase two, it's not there. Phase one, it's not there. Phase three, it is there. Okay, let's see. Sort of getting the idea of putting things in the different phases. It's really not too hard in terms of doing all that stuff. Let me kind of show you, though, you can change anything individually. For example, if 
one of those walls or maybe two of those walls or even three of those walls actually should be in a different phase, I can change their instance properties. This doesn't make a lot of sense to do, but I could say that no, they were actually created during phase two instead of being created in phase three. And what would happen then is those walls will show up over here, okay, waiting for the rest of the building to be built. Okay, so go ahead, try and get things in the appropriate phase so that they're created in the right phase. But if you ever get something in the wrong phase, know that you could always go back and just grab it and change the phase created. Okay, so far so good on creating things? Okay, no worries. Let's talk about the other side of the equation, demolishing things. Yes, much more fun. Okay, let's go back to phase one. I'm gonna go out here to phase one and I am going to put a building right in the way of where I want phase two to be, which is actually sort of a very common situation. I'll put some building, oh, this is some lab building that really needs to, we need to get rid of at some point. I'll go back to phase one, and you'll see it sort of sitting there looking in its natural state. Okay. But if I go to phase two, you'll sort of see I have a little bit of a conflict right now. I have a conflict between my new building in phase two and the old building that was around in phase one. So I need to do a little demolition to get rid of that building to make room for my new phase. Okay, so how can you do that? We can do that by choosing a wall. I'm in phase two right now, going to the instance properties and say, you know, I would really like to demolish you in phase two. Okay, and that'll make it go away. Okay, so you can go through and choose anything and set which phase it's demolished in. Okay, that's not too bad. Let me show you another way to do that. Under the Modify tab, there's a fantastic tool under here. It's the Demolish Sledgehammer. And if you choose the Demolish Sledgehammer and you click on an object, what it'll do is it'll set the demolished phase property for that object to be the phase you're in right now. So since I'm in phase two, it'll say that's gonna get demolished in phase two. So say goodbye, see you later. Oops, wrong thing. Don't swing that too fast. There, and maybe even over here. Okay, so I got rid of that building too. Okay. Again, it's still, or the, the room that thing needs to be, to be demolished, it's still there in phase one, it's gone in phase two, and it's gone in phase three. Okay, so that's the gist of it. Phase one, phase two, just set the phase created, the phase demolished, and you're in pretty good shape if you do that. Okay, and so far it's actually not too bad, but here's where it's gonna start to get tricky. Okay, it's always just about to get tricky somewhere. Okay, there's this whole notion of phase filters that control what it is that shows in each of these views, and let's kind of talk about them just ever so briefly to set the stage. Okay, so I can use the demolish tool or set the phase demolish phase to the current views phase. Okay, phase filters are only tricky because they involve the concept of your phase status relative to the current phase. We like things that have a status that doesn't change. Either you're here, you're there, we like to just call you one thing. But phase status is actually a relative notion, so there's this question of are you new, existing, demolished, or temporary, and the question's always relative to the phase we're looking at. It's gonna sound really weird, but let's say we were looking at phase two. Okay, in phase two, you'd be considered new if you had been created in phase two, okay, and you hadn't been demolished. Okay, so you'd be new then. In phase two, you'd be existing if you had been created in phase one or any prior phase and you still hadn't been demolished. So I'd call you existing at that point. Okay. Demolished is you were created in some prior phase and you were actually demolished in this phase. Okay. And that's the one that always sort of throws you because you're taking sort of an object from back there in time and you're looking at it from this point in time and saying, okay, great, you got demolished in this phase. So that's the one that's the tricky one. There's also this one that really baffles people, temporary things, things that got created and demolished in the same phase. So they don't even stick around. Okay, but let's show you how those things are useful. 
Okay, so there's this notion of these different sort of statuses, and what happens is we set up filters that really, based on the statuses, determine whether things will be displayed, not displayed, or displayed with sort of a special styling. So here's how the filters look. The show complete, okay, which goes through, actually, let's show it over here. That way the people on the video can see. There's show complete, okay, which says that, oh, things that are uh, new will be shown, things that are existing will be shown, but things that got demolished won't be shown. Show complete is a great view if you want to sort of see where things will be at the end of phase two, and okay, you don't want any distinction between the phase one and the phase two. They'll both look equal the same. None of them will be grayed out. A very closely related cousin of show complete is show previously, previous plus new, That'll show you the new objects. It still won't show you the demolished objects, but it'll override the existing ones. That's the one that grays out the things from the prior phases. So just puts a little bit more emphasis on the new as opposed to the existing. Okay? Show previous plus demo is one that we use whenever we want to show demolition plans that won't show the new objects. They're not displayed, but the existing and the demolished are shown. Okay? And the demolished are shown with a special override that shows them in red. Show new is another good one. That'll show me all the new things, but none of the old things. Okay. So there's these filters. And for the most part, this makes sense. Where we get in trouble, though, is in trying to understand whether you're new or existing based on your relative position or your, relative st your status relative to the current phase. That's where it gets a little confusing for people. But if you can handle that, let's sort of experiment with it and sort of see if we can like, uh, give you enough examples to make that make sense. So for example, let me go to phase two. Okay. In phase two, right now, this is set up to show me previously pr or previous plus new. So these new objects are shown kind of in their natural state. That's grayed out right now. Okay. If I wanted to change that so they're all even, I could go to view properties and set up the phase filter that shows show complete. Show complete shows them all equal. There's no overriding. It's just sort of showing me what needs to be shown in this view with no overrides. If I go to view properties and instead I say, oh, show new, it'll only show me the new things. It won't show me the previous. Here, this is the one that sort of confuses people. I'll go to phase two, view properties, and I'll say show previous plus demo. Okay, and that'll show us this view. It'll show us the previous plus the building that's going to be demolished. Okay, yeah, you can handle those things and keep them straight, you're in good shape. Let me show you one other variation, just what that temporary is used for. Here's the idea of temporary. Very often as we're building something like this, we actually need a special place where the construction trailers are going to be, or the yard where all the materials are going to be staged, or maybe even like a piece of equipment that's going to have to be maneuvered around, like a big tower crane or something like that. So what we can do is as follows. I'll go back to, oh, phase two. Let me zoom on out here. I'll say that, oh, I'm going to put something down that'll represent the construction trailer. It's going to be a relatively small little thing. This is going to be the construction trailer. For the walls themselves, let me just give them sort of a generic wall type. They don't need anything special there. But for the properties of the walls, let me say that it's going to come about in phase two. It's not going to come on site till phase two. And it's actually going to go away in phase two also. Okay. So it kind of looks like it's missing right now. And the reason it's missing right now is it got demolished in phase two as well as created. And by default, this view doesn't show me anything that got demolished. Okay. I could go ahead and let me go back to this phase two. Say that I want to go through and show all again, one of the view prop or, uh, filters. Pop over there. Sh 
so all will show me everything. The good, the bad, the ugly, everything's in there, including my little temporary trailer. Okay. Or a, a common view I might want to use if I was going to go through and do the construction coordination on this project would be I might set up a phase filter just to show me. Show temp and demo where I'm not going to show the new. I'll leave that one out. I'll leave the over existing overridden, but I'll show the demolished. And I'll actually show the temporary, too. And oops, let me go ahead and change this view to use that filter. View, view properties. And instead of showing all, I can say show temp and demo. And that'll show sort of what it is that the people who are actually going to start the construction on the site need to see. They need to see where they're going to put their facilities and what has to be demoed. Okay, and that's kind of enough to get started. There's this whole issue of really why that shows up in red and why that shows up in blue and why that shows up in gray, and it's really just a choice. Those are called overrides, overrides based on status, and if you want to go through and change those, it's actually really easy. You can go ahead and really override the appearance of anything. It's in this view, in phase filters, it's wherever you see overridden. Okay? So there's an override for the existing, there's an override for the demolished, there's an override for temporary. And you can create additional phase filters if you want, but let me show you what the overrides look like. Okay, The overrides let you basically set up kind of a line weight, a line color, and even a material in which to display those things that are overridden. And let's show you what that looks like here. Under phases, the graphic overrides of the last tab, you'll see that the existing is basically, if you override existing, we just want to show it in that gray material. Similarly, if you want to show things as demoed, it's set to show in that red material. In temporary, is set up to show in this blue material. Kay. And it's because of those overrides, and we can change them. If it turns out that I don't really like blue so much, I could just as easily say that the temporary is going to be purple. And then they'll show up in purple instead. Also? Yes, if you don't want to override those things, what you do is in phases. You just basically turn it off, so instead of saying overridden, you can either say not displayed, or you can say by category, that would be the natural appearance. Okay. So only override sort of when you're trying to sort of highlight some specific aspect of it. So this 3D view is kind of okay in terms of showing those things, but let me go through and show you that it works in the other views too. I'll just duplicate this first floor view. Actually, I'm going to do it for phase two because I want to show the demolition during the phase two. So I could say comp level one, phase two, let me rename this to demo. Say OK. And then I will change the properties of this view. I'm probably set to phase two right now, but I think I probably have the wrong visibility set right now. So I'm on phase. Oops. Not even the right phase. Make sure I'm looking at the right view. Yep, level, okay, let's change it. Vi uh, view properties. Oh, v VP. Yes. And I should, yeah, remind, catch me on those, so I always give you the shortcuts. So if I want to show the temp and demo, I can show those. And then I'll actually have a floor plan that'll show those, which is going to be useful. I can print this out, give it to the construction folks. They can see exactly what it is they're going to demolish, where their temporary construction is going to be. You know, it's actually it sounds weird to have demolition plans, but it's really incredibly useful because when people come in and demolish, they want to go quick, and you really have to be very careful to make sure they don't over demolish things. They would really prefer just to bring the bulldozer in and take the whole thing out. So if you want to keep anything. You have to be really careful about specifying exactly what it is. Yes, Jacob. Yes. 
probably some of both. Probably some of both. But no, it's, it's definitely quick and easy. But sometimes you actually need to save some things. Yeah, I, I get in a situation where you know, I've, I've had huge problems before where people over demolish things. Because when you're working on historic structures, it's very important to kind of keep as much of the existing structure around. OK, so you know, I get very fastidious about what has to stay and what can go and stuff like that. Because there are actually limitations on it. In fact, if you're building a house, for example, somewhere in the Santa Clara Valley, you can demolish up to 50% of the walls. As soon as you demolish that 51st percent of a wall, okay, it becomes a new house as opposed to a renovated house, and it qualifies for a whole different tax status. Okay, so yeah, oh. So if you ever drive by a site and you see all these exterior walls and everything else is completely torn down, it's because they're trying to basically qualify the house under the old tax rate, under the new tax rate. That's what's going on there. Question? No. Nah. OK. No worries. OK. So we're going to go ahead and we can set up the visibility graphics override. That's all fine. When it comes time to actually do your construction, though, there are a couple sort of combinations of phase filters and phases that make the most sense. So there's so much flexibility. You can really do almost anything you want to. But there's really just a few that are the ones that you're going to keep on relying on again and again. And they're right here. So there is the all-purpose I want to show what's existing, or often I'll call that an as-built drawing. Okay, And when I want to do that, I'll go to phase one, and I'll say show previous and new. It'll show me anything that was in created in phase one or even before that, and it won't show me anything that got demolished. So if you got demolished earlier, you won't see it. It's just going to show me what was created earlier. Yeah, so phase one, it's going to be just exact, exactly what's as-built. Okay, For proposed views, that is, I've proposed a new plan, and I want you to see what I'm proposing for the site. Okay. I'll say phase two, or phase three, if I'm showing you phase three's proposal. Show previous plus new, same phase filter. But just because it's shifted from phase one to phase two, it'll show me the phase two objects. Okay. It's going to still omit the demolished objects, okay. which for most of my plans is what I want. I tend to show you sort of what I want to build in the context of what's going to remain around. But I tend to sort of hide the things that will be demolished. I'll save those demolished objects for a second type of plan, a demolition view. And that will should be phase two. And the difference is the filter is different. Instead of showing you previous plus new, it will show you previous plus demo. So you can sort of see what will be demolished in the context of what was already there. Okay, But those three will really take you through almost everything you need in terms of like going through and uh, creating the views you want. You could always create some other ones to sort of feature some aspect that you need, but those will get you to like 90% uh, you know, of the way through. <coughs> so now in terms of how all this stuff is implied, okay, there is this notion that really as you work with objects by the view you're working with, you're always implicitly setting the properties as you work. So as you create elements, if you're in a phase three view, the phase created is going to match phase three. If you demolish an element in phase three, the phase demolished property will be set to phase three. Okay, so that's actually you know the, the easiest thing to do is just get to the right view and either add or demolish in that view. Okay. Let's go ahead and well now we'll do that in context. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and take our break now. So let's stop, jump up, stretch for five minutes, and all that type of stuff. Come on back. And when you come on back, we're actually going to go ahead and apply all this stuff to a different project, not our big campus here, where it's pretty easy to keep the phases sorted out. We're going to go to a little remodeling project where it's actually a lot trickier to figure out what's going to be demolished, how much of it's going to be demolished, and how the new and the old fit together. Okay? So let's go ahead and break there.